All right, good morning. Um, MUCT uh, 211 L class, a uh, Theory 2 first quarter class. Uh, as promised, here is the harmonic dictation review. We didn't get two in last Friday's class. Um, now, before we get into uh, the, the review of the harmonic dictations themselves, uh, we also need to review the qualities of chords uh, that, uh, that exist in both the major and minor modes. We're going to be working on our bass only harmonic dictations at first. Remember where we have the bass line, the spaces underneath, you're dictating the bass line and then putting the chord and its inversion uh, uh, below. Uh, before we do that, we're going to review what the qualities of the chords are in major and minor. So, we start here um, with the one chord, of course, in major, the one chord is major, the two chord is minor, the three chord is likewise minor, the four chord is major, I'm going to drop an octave here so I don't have to do a bunch of ledger lines, the five chord is major, the six chord minor, and the seventh chord diminished. If remember, this is indicated by the circle, the diminished circle to indicate uh, its quality. Um, seventh chords, seventh chords in um, major mode. So if we add the seventh, the one seven is a major major triad. We add the seventh and two. This is a minor minor triad. Also, if we add the seventh in the three chord, it is also a minor minor triad. The four chord, major major. The five chord, okay, or we call the dominant seventh chord, is a major minor seventh chord. The sixth chord is another minor minor chord, and the seven seven chord is half diminished, as it is naturally found here in the major mode. Okay, that's important to remember because here uh, in the review, though it is a review, I am putting seventh chords into that because we we got seventh chords. Uh, in, uh, in our dictations uh, fairly early in the spring quarter of last year. Okay, and, uh, and inversions, inversions are, also, uh, are also in the mix. Let me get an eraser here, and let's review what we have in the minor mode. Let's just erase that. Let me take the sevenths off real quick. Put our minor mode key signature and review the qualities of chords in the minor mode. Okay, the one chord is minor, the two chord is diminished, and remember I'm indicating as such with the circle. Um, if you even hear it as minor and put the two down without the circle, it's uh, a lower a lowercase uh, lower two without the circle is minor, not diminished, so make sure that you're careful about that. Three is major, four is minor, five diatonically is minor, um, but if we're using the harmonic minor mode and raising T, that becomes major, six, as it's most commonly uh, found with the lower and sixth scale degree, is major, and seven, uh, uh, talking about the difference between the natural minor scale and the harmonic minor scale, if, if we use T, the lowered seventh scale degree, as the root, it will be major, and if we use T, the raised seventh scale degree, seven will be diminished. Okay, let's add the sevenths to these. One is a minor minor seventh chord. Two is a half diminished seventh chord. Three is a major major seventh chord. Four is a minor, minor seventh chord. Five, seven without the raised T is a minor, minor seventh chord. Five, seven with the raised T is a dominant or major, minor seventh chord. Six is a major, major chord. Seven, seven with the lowered uh, seventh scale degree T is also major, minor, just as the raised 5-7 chord is major minor, and again the 5-7, uh, uh, sorry, the 7-7 seven, seven chord with the raised 1 um, 
because this is raised, this is a diminished sixth interval because uh, la is lay, lowered. This is fully diminished, a fully diminished seventh chord. Okay, so uh, remember that. Uh, if you need to uh, write these down uh, uh, for a review, by all means do so. If this is YouTube, you can always pull the slider back, pause it if you want to write these things down to remind yourself. Of course, inversions, uh, we know uh, inversions are uh, just uh, these in different proportions or these in different order. All right, let's review the mechanics of the harmonic dictation. Start with the bass clef. Put, I think this case, I think we're going to be, all of these are going to be seven chords long. So we're going to put seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to start off in the key of C major, so no key signature. And as always, Do in the bass, make that a little clearer. Do in the bass is going to start us off in the one chord in root position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, of course, a bass line in the left hand. You are responsible for dictating that left hand bass line. You are also responsible for hearing the qualities of the chords and deducing from the qualities of the chords in the bass line what the function is, what the chord is uh, that exists there and what its inversion is, if it is an inversion. Um, so you're going to need to... Um, First, you can of course do this in any order you like, depending on, on what you uh, typically hear, in what order. I generally start with the bass line, get the bass line down first. Then I go with the qualities of the chords, finding out first, are they a triad or a seventh chord? And then second, what is the quality of the triad or the seventh chord to determine in what inversion. Uh, eventually, of course, we want these to, be, uh, to be, become automatic, all of these uh, steps happening at the same time. For now, if you need to do them in a particular order, I would suggest starting with the bass motion, then the quality of the chord, identifying whether it's a triad or a seventh chord, and then identifying um, the quality of that triad or seventh chord, and then determining what inversion, and then cleaning it all up. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll, I'm going to sit at the piano, which is next to me, and I'm going to play through this. Uh, I'm going to play through it two times to make sure that uh, at least uh, one of the uh, examples is a good one that gets into the, the, the speaker of the microphone here. I'm not going to play it anymore because, again, this being YouTube, you can, uh, you can uh, play it over and over again as many times as you need, and it'll be identical each time. I am going to give you the answer to this first one. However, I do want you to uh, make a reasonable attempt to get this one before I come up and put the answer in. All right, and the, the second one we do, I will not give you the answer. We're going to work on this in class next week. All right, let's start with this one. So uh, put all this information down, seven chords, do in the bass, one chord. And here we are. Here's what it'll sound like. Okay, I'll count us off. One, two, three, four. get it if you need to. I'm about to give you the answer. All right, it was a pattern in the bass. It's do, mi, re, fa, mi, sol, do. So you should uh, recognize that little skipping melodic pattern in the bass. And the, uh, um, the uh, uh, identification of the chords are as follows. We start, of course, with major one, and then we just inverted to one, six, Okay. This was a minor minor 7th chord with the 2, the 2nd scale degree, so it became 2-7. 
This was a major chord with Fa in the bass, four. This was a major chord with Mi in the bass, one six. And this was a major minor seventh chord with Sol in the bass, five seven, resolving to one. All right, this next one, I'm not going to give the answer to, uh, but I want you to work on it as well as you can. This will include seven spaces again, three, four, five, six, seven, with the same starting note and the same starting quality. All right, I'm going to play this one twice through as well. Of course, with the understanding, you can listen to it as many times as you need to get it correctly. Starting here, one, two. Uh, let's try that one more time, excuse me. One, two, three, four. Do your best on that one. Now let's shift to the minor mode. Shift to the minor mode. We will begin, of course, as we did before. Do in the bass, one in the space. Uh, this first one will have uh, seven chords. Actually, each one of these will have seven chords. I'll go through this twice again and I will um, give you the answers. Just remember minor mode, we have a couple of more options. We have a couple of more options that are possible because of the uh, variety that can exist using te or t. So the five chord uh, is variable. There are two options for the five chord and there are two options for the seven chord. So uh, listen carefully to see if we can get those. All right, let's listen to this one a couple of times and I will give you the answer. Again, excuse me, and because this is a long video, we're just going to have to uh, uh, deal with that. The first couple of notes were correct, but uh, let's try that again. One, two, three, Here's the answer. You should recognize the bass motion because it was the same as the bass motion of the first major mode. 
uh, example I gave you. It was, again, a sequence, uh, a, a third jumping step down sequence. Do, me, re, fa, me, so, do. So recognizing those set patterns and sequences will make it a lot easier because this is half of the work done right here. All right, after the minor one, then we had one six. It's a minor uh, triad, me in the bass, that is the uh, most likely, and of course, uh, the same chord in both. Then we had re in the bass and a half diminished seventh chord. That gave us really no other option but to choose two half diminished seven. Um, oh, excuse me, that is incorrect. That's what I meant to do here. This chord was a major minor seventh chord, excuse me, with re in the bass, and that gave us. Uh, fewer options because we heard T then to do the 5-4-3 chord. Here is where I had Fa in the bass with a half diminished seventh chord and that gave us two half diminished 6-5. Then we had Me in the bass and it would be tempting to identify it again as a 1-6 except the triad, triad was a major and that gives us most likely the 3. And then Five. Try it by itself. Listen for the T in the bass to make sure that you know that it is a five major five chord and we resolve back down to one. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more of these. And at this time I will not give you the answer. You're going to need to bring the answer with you to class on Friday. And we will uh, work through it together. All right, here's another one. Here we are. One, two, three, Good luck. Work on these as many times as you need, and uh, we'll review uh, these and kind of find out where we are in class uh, next Friday. Okay, good luck with those. We'll see you then.